Hey everybody. So, the art of building something that's really good at keeping people trapped is a pursuit that's been evolving for thousands of years. Some of the greatest feats of construction in history have been prisons. Guantanamo Bay, the Tower of London, and that one cops and robbers map for Minecraft. Possibly the most infamous of all prisons was the Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, located a mile off the coast of San Francisco. Operational from 1934 to 1963, Alcatraz gained a reputation for being escape-proof, its name becoming synonymous with complete security. Extremely harsh conditions, tight security measures, and a truly unfortunate location on a rocky island miles from land ensured that Alcatraz earned its reputation. Of course, this didn't stop people from trying anyway. A grand total of 36 prisoners attempted to forcefully check themselves out over the course of 14 escape attempts. Uh, this amounts to roughly 2.57 prisoners per escape. I think my math is off somewhere, but it doesn't matter. As you might have expected, these attempts were just that, attempts. Probably due to the fact that most of their plans consisted of beat up guards, saw open a window, and find enough wooden planks to craft a boat, pretty much none of them actually succeeded. I have the exact statistics here, uh, 23 were caught, 6 were shot, and 2 gave up. However, those of you who are quick on the draw when it comes to math, or those of you who are really weird and keep a calculator with you while watching YouTube, have probably noticed that this is only 31. What happened to the other five? Well, two of those guys you can just ignore. In 1931, Theodore Cole and Ralph Rowe executed their great escape, at which point they most likely died by drowning. However, their remains were never found, so they're officially classified as unknown escaped slash missing. However, there are three more guys who are more likely to have escaped than anyone else in history. This is The Men Who Might Have Escaped Alcatraz. Our strange story begins in the year 1962 with our three men, Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, John and Clarence. There was also this fourth guy named Alan West, but you can ignore this guy for now. Frank Morris, 36, had been abandoned as a child and since age 13 had committed breaking and entering, burglary, narcotics possession, armed robbery, unlawful flight, bank robbery, and grand larceny. Morris had an IQ of 133 and had already escaped to prison before being sent to Alcatraz. John and Clarence Anglin, 32 and 31 respectively, had tried to rob a bank in Atlanta with a toy gun, and were sent to three prisons before finally being thrown in Alcatraz as a last resort. This bizarre collection of individuals, with a little help, managed to pull off something that you'd see in a heist movie, which is fitting because they made this into a movie about a decade later. Actually, I know I said it started in 1962, but let's go back to 1961. Late this year, Morris, the Anglin brothers, and Alan West, who was in for car theft and had the approximate education of an 8th grader, were placed into adjacent cells. They immediately got to work on making a plan, with Morris using his 133 IQ to spearhead the project. The four fellows had previously shared a prison in Atlanta, and thus had a greater level of trust than average inmates. The first order of business was to hack away at the ventilation ducts beneath their sinks with, quote, discarded saw blades, metal spoons, and I swear I'm not making this up, quote, an electric drill improvised from a vacuum cleaner motor. The sound of the drill was apparently disguised by Morris playing his accordion. The holes were concealed by painted cardboard until the men could enter them. At this point, you may be wondering, how could four men in what was supposedly the most secure prison on earth get their hands on hardware and musical instruments? The answer to that question is an even greater mystery than what happened to the men, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Using their tunnels, the men traveled through a utility corridor to an unused level of the cell block where they set up a workshop. Using the Home Depot grade equipment that they apparently had access to, the men constructed life preservers from raincoats, based on something they saw in Popular Mechanics, which they also apparently had access to. The men also used the raincoats to make a massive raft, sealed the seams with heat from the steam pipes, and inflated it with a bellows made from a concertina, which is basically a weird accordion. After making paddles with scrap wood and rivets, the men climbed to the roof after blowing through a fan that was in the way. Now, by this point, it probably seems apparent that Morris and the gang were regular MacGyvers, but you may be wondering how exactly they pulled off the escaping the prison sneaky ending without the guards noticing. The answer, of course, is dummy heads. 
the group was able to piece together some really creepy dummy heads made from soap, toothpaste, concrete powder, toilet paper, paint, and hair from the prison barbershop. I'm going to show you a picture of one of them just for context. Yeah, apparently these things were able to fool the guards for several months with no problems. I guess when you're a prison guard in Alcatraz, you're just really not prepared for this level of deception. Anyway, with the raincoat raft constructed and the dummy heads working as planned, the Alcatraz Escape Association was ready to bust a move. On the night of June 11, 1962, the gang executed their plan. All four members tried to escape, and a whopping three of them made it past the escape passages they had dug. The vent in Alan West's room had been shored up with concrete powder that had unfortunately hardened. West dug the concrete out, but by that time his prison break buddies had already ditched him and he decided to return to his cell. Meanwhile, Morris and the Anglin brothers were climbing up to the roof. The guards on duty at the time actually heard a crash when the group broke onto the roof, but they apparently did not deem the investigation of the noise important enough to actually investigate. Yes, the night guards on duty at Alcatraz heard a crash on the roof and decided not to investigate. Morris and the Anglins hauled their equipment across the roof and shimmied five stories down a drain pipe on the side of the building. Then they moved across the grounds and scaled the 12-foot barbed wire fence, all while escaping notice. Near the island's power plant, the group leveled up their sneak as they exploited a blind spot in the searchlights and gun towers before making their way to the shore. Around 10 p.m., after inflating their raft with an accordion and aiming towards nearby Angel Island, Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin boarded their boat and escaped Alcatraz. Guards didn't even notice the group was gone until the next morning, thanks to the incredibly convincing dummy heads. At the time, the warden was on vacation in Napa County and just couldn't be bothered to make an appearance, although he doubted the escapees were alive. Pieces of wreckage were found over the next few weeks, but the men's whereabouts were still unknown. At the time, the FBI made public their belief that the group had drowned, but to this day, the exact fate of the three men is still unknown. A later escapee who swam the distance the group had supposedly covered and survived cast doubt on the idea, as did several reports and sightings, although none were confirmed. In 1979, a film was made about the events starring Clint Eastwood, and more or less importantly, the case was officially closed with an inconclusive result. Throughout the years, everyone and their second cousin claimed to have seen the group, and multiple pieces of evidence, including a photograph, supposedly of the Anglin brothers in Brazil, and a letter, supposedly sent by John Anglin, have further complicated the matter. However, as no conclusive answer has ever been reached, anything is possible. Like in the somewhat similar case of D.B. Cooper, the men very well could have escaped and possibly lived out their lives, although I'd really doubt they're still alive unless they're like 90 years old. But just remember, you too could escape Alcatraz, provided you have 133 IQ and a few dummy heads. Thanks for watching.